One thing that's always bugged me about the perspective projection model is that negative sign. And one of the things that you'll notice as you go through the literature is it often gets dropped. And that's, that's not a mistake. It's that they're taking a slightly different approach to how they uh, model the camera formation process, uh, the image formation process. And I think it's important to explain that because you will see this over and over again in the literature. So notice here that I've drawn a slightly different camera. I've got all the parts here, but it, they're wired up a little bit differently. So first of all, I've got the photosensitive material here. I've got the optical axis um, going out this way, so the world is here. But notice now that the aperture is behind the camera, which of course makes no sense, and in fact is not phys physically plausible. But you're gonna see in a minute why I've done that. So I've got still the same focal length, the distance between the aperture and the photosensitive material. Um, I've got my optical axis going out, so I'm gonna put a point out in the world here, and let's see what happens. Well, let's first define our coordinate systems. So I've got my, my world coordinate system, which looks exactly the same as before. I've got the Z axis going out along the optical axis, starting, by the way, at the aperture. That's where, that's where we're always going to be starting. I've got the capital X still in the world coordinate system going up and parallel to the photosensitive material. And then, of course, I have my photosensitive material, which has a small X coordinate system. Again, origin is at the optical axis and is parallel to the world over here. So the pieces are exactly the same. What have I done? I've just flipped these two. Why have I flipped them? I'm going to get rid of that negative sign in the perspective projection. Okay, so let's, point, let's take a point out in the world, capital P, vector again, capital X, capital Z. We have a point, a two-dimensional point. We're still in flatland. We're still in two-dimensional world. We'll do 3D later. The game is still the same. I take a point from here and I draw a straight line through the aperture. It's just that it strikes the sensor before it enters the aperture. Again, not physically plausible, but this is the way people draw these cameras because it slightly changes the perspective projection uh, model. So there's my little x. That's the projection of the point onto the sensor. Now, if there is any sanity in the world, this should end up looking exactly like the perspective projection that we've already seen, minus the minus sign. Well, let's go ahead and derive that and still, instead of me just promising you that is in fact the case. All right, triangles are our friend, geometry. So what do I have here? I've got one big triangle that is made up of the aperture, the point in the world, and then the corresponding point on the optical axis. So the triangle has sides capital X and capital Z. I have another triangle, a smaller one right here, little x. And then what is this distance here? Well, that's just the focal length. And so now I have two similar triangles, and now I can play the same game. The ratio of the height to the length should be the same. So now let's go ahead and look at that. So what do I have here? I have that, uh, let's go over here first. I've got capital X over capital Z is equal to capital, little x over little f. Notice there's no minus sign. Why is there no minus sign? Well, notice here that I have a positive big X and I have a positive little x. And if I inverted, I would have negative big X and negative little x. And so there's no inversion here because I flipped the sensor and the aperture. And so now what I can write is that little x is equal to fx over z. Same perspective projection equation, we've just dropped the negative sign. And again, the reason I do this is not that it's really fundamentally any different. It's that in the literature, you will often see perspective projection written without the negative sign. And all they're doing is essentially doing the inversion that you're going to do anyway. They're just doing it directly in the model instead of having to do it in a post-processing step. Okay, so everything's still the same. Everything is inversely, the size of everything is still inversely relationship to, uh, related to Z. And we have the same basic effects. Now, something really interesting happens when, you, when we have this perspective projection model, whether it's this one or the inverted one. And it gets at, in some ways, why computer vision is so incredibly hard. You have this sense when you look at an image that it's a pretty good representation of the world. It's not, I'm not confused by what I'm looking at. I can reason about things. I know that there are objects there. I know their relative uh, sizes. I know about where they are to each other. I can recognize things. But there is a phenomenal amount of ambiguity in these images that may not be immediately apparent. And I want to point that out because it is arguably one of the things that makes computer vision very, very difficult. 
So let's again start with a single point out in the world, xz. We now know that the projection into the sensor is going to be little f, focal length, uh, times the x-coordinate of the point in the world divided by the z uh, component, which is, of course, again, the perspective projection. Let's think about another point that is along this ray. So let me call that point alpha x over uh, alpha z. And so notice that I've scaled the x and the z component by exactly the same scalar value alpha. And that, of course, just moves the point along the line through the origin. And notice now that that point, which is much closer to the camera, projects to what? Well, it's just f alpha x over alpha z. The alphas, of course, cancel, and I'm left with fx over z. It's exactly in the same position as the point that was further out. And of course, if I take a point and I move it even further out, it's at some other alpha x, alpha z, and it's going to project to exactly the same point, which means that we have an inherent ambiguity in the image formation process. All points along this ray will image to exactly the same point. And you sort of knew it had to be that way. Why? Well, because I have points out in a two-dimensional world, and I'm projecting them into a one-dimensional sensor. Eventually, I'll take points in a three-dimensional world and project them into a two-dimensional sensor. There is a loss of information. There is an inherent ambiguity in the size-distance relationship to an image relative to the world. Now, the human visual system, this thing right here, deals with that ambiguity in a number of different ways. First of all, I have two eyes. So I see the world from slightly different perspectives, which allows me to reason more about the three-dimensional world. I also have a lot of inherent knowledge about the world. I know roughly how big people are so I can reason about how far they are. I also can move. As I move, I can reason about where things are in the world relative to my motion. I have what's called motion parallax, and so there's more cues. But from a single static image, there is a phenomenal loss of information that makes many, many things in computer vision much, much harder. And I just want to make sure that we understand that loss of information or that ambiguity that arises. Okay, so we now have two versions of the perspective projection under a camera obscura or pinhole camera model. Little x is equal to minus focal length big X over big Z. So take the two coordinates in the world, take the ratio, multiply by f. And because we just don't want to deal with inverted images, we now have a slightly different imaging model where we invert the aperture in the sensor, we get rid of that negative sign, and it's just a convenience downstream as we're trying to reason about the three-dimensional world from the two-dimensional image. We don't have to lug around a minus sign. And that's the reason why we did this slightly different version of the camera obscura.